In this SketchUp tutorial video, I want to go over the basics of how we use the Arc tool, which is what we're finding here in our large tool set located below the line. When I grab that tool, the first thing you're going to notice is that your cursor changes. It's a little pencil with a three-point arc below it. And with that, we see that there are three dots. One of them is red. That's indicating that I'm picking that left point first. Then I'll be picking the right and then the center, and those will line up accordingly. Down in the lower right in the value control box, it says sides. This is also how the polygon and the circle worked. Right now it says 24, which means I'll have a fairly smooth arc. If I reduce that number, it will get uh, you know, more um, jagged along the edge. So I'll leave that at 24 right now, and I'll click for my first point. Then, instead of saying sides, that value control box changes to say length. So this is how far from point one to point two I'm going to be. So I'll say 10 feet, enter, and then the value control box changes to say bulge. So this is how deep or shallow this arc is going to be. I can either eyeball it, or I could actually type in a measurement. I'll say five feet. There we go. And now we have an arc that's very smooth. That's 10 feet from point one to point two and five feet from the center to the midpoint on the end. If I do that again, having an arc, this time I make the number of sides, maybe I'll say eight. I'll come out this direction. I'll go 10 feet again, and I'll go back 5 feet. You'll be able to see how the first one with 24 sides is much smoother than this one with only 8. If we make those into three-dimensional shapes that we can push-pull, you'll see the difference a little bit more. So let's grab my line tool and connect the bottoms of each arc Now I'll use my push-pull and I'll just pull those up, you know, five feet each one. And if I push down my scroll wheel and orbit around, you'll see that, you know, basically they look very similar, but this one has that jagged edge and this one looks pretty smooth. Also, this one reflects the light around that smooth face a little bit nicer and this one gives a little bit more of a faceted look. Um, but if you're doing something very simple and schematic that has a lot of parts, you might want to keep those faces down so you don't bog down SketchUp too much. Something to point out on these curved surfaces uh, is that if I use the push-pull, I can use that on the top and bottom. I can use it on the back and I could use it here on this new surface I created because they're all flat. But I cannot use the push-pull on a smooth curved surface like that. It just won't work. In our large tool set below the arc, we have the freehand tool. And that one is really pretty simple. And it just lets us freehand draw something. So this is going to be really great for organic things. Once you've made a shape and connect the last point to the beginning point, you'll see that you create a face inside of that, just like we do with anything else. And with this, I can also use the push-pull and pull this object into three dimensions. This object, however, would not let me do that push-pull along this curved surface, uh, just like the arc or a circle would. Okay, so that's the basics of using the arc and that freehand tool.